In a previous video, I talked about the determinants of industry profitability by looking at Michael Porter's five forces model. And what I want to do in this video is go into a little more detail about one of the five factors, in this case, the threat of new entrants. Now, what determines whether other businesses, other firms, will enter an industry? Well, there's certain factors. For example, if the entrant faces high sunk costs. Now, we're used to hearing that sunk costs should be ignored. And that's absolutely correct. Sunk costs are investments that cannot be recovered once invested. So once you've spent the money, you can't get it back. When you've stood in line to buy tickets for a concert, you can't have that time back. Right? The years you spent in college uh, studying to be an architect, if you wake up one morning and decide, I want to be a public school teacher, well, you can't have back that time. So the decision you make moving forward should ignore the sunk cost. However, sunk costs are important before they're incurred. Before you make the big investment, you can decide, do I want to take that big investment? And in this case, if there are high sunk costs, those costs that you can't recover, it may in fact be the case that you choose not to enter the industry. For example, in many businesses, large R&D expenditures are required to get into the industry. Okay? If you look at my profession, being a college professor, there's a large sunk cost here because you have to go to grad school, you have to generally get a PhD to teach at a university, and that's a very high cost. If uh, you get a PhD in, in chemical engineering, that may not have so much of a sunk cost because you may go and work for a large uh, a chemical company. But on the, in the case of getting a, a PhD in English, well, you probably could do just as well with a master's degree in English as a school teacher or as an editor or a writer. You probably don't need to spend all those extra years getting that. So, you know, that's what keeps people out of the profession. It's a, it's a very long road. It requires four years, five years, sometimes many more years than that after the bachelor's degree to get a PhD. Okay. Other things that will keep people out of an industry. There may be government regulations limiting entry. You may have licenses or permits uh, that may limit the number of entrants. For example, you can't just hang a shingle outside your door that says you're a doctor. If you want to um, do medical work, if you want to perform as a physician, surgery or other types of work that a physician would do, you have to take a license exam and you have to go through med school. Uh, to be a lawyer, you have to pass the bar exam. To be um, a CPA, you're passing a licensing exam. Um, there may be permits required for selling or serving liquor. Okay? You, you've maybe been to restaurants where they don't have a liquor license. Some places uh, have, in my state, some places have a bring your own license. So you can bring your own bottle of wine. However, the business itself is not making any money from that, right? They, they just basically uncork your bottle of wine and put it in a glass for you, but they're not making the money from selling it. Uh, if you want to be a cab driver in New York City, you have to have a medallion. So that also limits entry into an industry. Incumbents may have a competitive advantage. For example, if potential entrants are at a competitive disadvantage compared to existing players, it simply may not be profitable to enter. Okay? Brand recognition may make, up, uh, make it difficult for a new entrant to compete. Uh, that's why sometimes you'll find businesses, uh, firms that want to get into another line of business instead of starting their own line, they may simply buy an existing company because establishing the brand recognition can be expensive. When Chrysler wanted to get into the um, all-terrain vehicle, the, uh, the um, SUV market, they could have started their own division, but instead they bought uh, the Jeep Eagle division because Jeep is sort of synonymous with the original sport utility vehicle. Um, 
incumbents may have locked up distribution channels. This is very true of, of many food products, including beverages. I mean, it's not really hard to make um, a cola beverage. I mean, it's what is it? It's water, it's carbonation, it's sweetener, it's some flavor. The problem is, is that who's going to put it on their shelves? There's only so much shelf space in the grocery store. There's only so much shelf space in the convenience stores. And they're not likely to move that stuff out to put your brand in there. If you're going to get them to, to sell your brand, you're probably going to have to offer them some great incentives, a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of good deals. You're practically going to have to give it to the supermarket for free for a while and they're going to be making all the money you're going to be giving away your product. There may also be economies of scale. That is, a small company simply can't produce enough to get its cost structure down to make it uh, competitive with the incumbents that are much larger. You may also find the case that the entrant faces retaliation. Okay? It's less likely that uh, you're going to enter an industry if the businesses that are already there are going to try and force you out of, out of, the, uh, out of the market. And they may do that by some sort of pricing behavior. That is, they may lower price so it's not profitable for you to get in, and then as soon as they drive you out of business, then they go and they raise price back up again. So there are a lot of factors that determine whether it's easy to get into an industry or not. Some things, for example, like I said, making beverages, making soft drinks is quite easy, but it's also very difficult to get into the market.